Okay, hello everyone and welcome to the video. In this one, I'm going to show you how to make a simple invoice in Excel that you can save as a template and use over and over again. So you might be bootstrapping an operation and therefore you don't wanna spend money on a software package at this point. Uh, so you're just running your books and your invoicing in Excel and that's fine. Um, or you maybe just want the flexibility that comes with Excel. So either way, I'm gonna show you how to do it. So first things first, we're gonna lay out the, the page size. And we might not get it exactly how we want it the first time, guys, but that's sort of half the process of getting in there and learning how to have a bit of a play and just tinkering things to how you like it. So we've got our page size here, and now I'm going, going to remove the grid lines. There we go. And now we're going to get started. So I'm gonna put a title in here and I'm going to merge and center. And we're gonna say tax invoice. Bold that and I might make it a bit bigger as well. Now we're gonna put in the company details here. This is your company. So we'll say your company, PTYLTD. Your address. And we're gonna put in your ABN. So you might want to bold this and you might even want to change the text color. We're going to make it blue. And now we're going to put in the invoice date. Invoice number and the terms. So for the dates, what I'll do here is I will, or actually we'll put in the dart here first and we'll see how it looks. Invoice number 001, the first invoice. And if we want it to stay displaying 001, I can put in one of these little apostrophe things here. And there you go. Terms, 14 days. Now you might have noticed this little green square here. What we're gonna to do to get rid of that is click on here and say ignore error. And then we might just wanna format this a little bit. We can center it. We can put it to the right. And we might have to make this cell here a little bit bigger. And you'd probably want this to line up as well. So we'll go, we'll cut that and paste it there. So then this stuff all lines and looks a bit easier on the eye. So we're gonna go down now and we're gonna put in who we're invoicing. And then you might put in the customer's address or perhaps an email address as well. So that's the basics of the top section. What we're gonna do now is go into the body of the invoice. So I'm gonna create a square here to put in some labels. Okay, so what did I do there? 
So I'm going to center this stuff. And I'm going to have to play around with the columns here a little bit. A little error popped up. Okay, I might just make this a little bit bigger. Just play around with it until you're happy with the way it looks. I'm going to put a border down here. And then some subtotal balances. I'm going to bold that, control B, or you can click up here. I'm going to put another line down here and we'll put in the banking details. Gonna bold that. Your bank account name, which is usually the the name of your business that the bank account is registered under. The BSB number, the account number. And then we're going to say to please quote invoice number on remittance. And that way, when someone makes a payment in the description field, they'll put the invoice number, in this case is 001, so that when you're reconciling your incoming payments, it's nice and easy for you. You know which invoice to match it up to. I might just put another line down here. Sorry guys, I'm not a great speller. All right, so let's say that you worked on two jobs. One we'll call project X and the other one we'll call project Y. And let's say you did five hours on project X. $30 an hour for that particular job and you did two hours on project Y and this job was a bit more complex so it was $40 an hour and I'm just putting in the dollar sign up here guys to turn it from a, just a basic general cell into a accounting cell with a dollar sign. Now in this column over here I'm going to go equals the quantity multiplied by the item amount. So five hours at $30 an hour equals $150. And then I'm just gonna drag this down and that'll copy the formula. Two quantity multiplied by 40 item amount equals $80. Now for the GST, that's 10%. So we're gonna go equals the amount times 0.1. So $15 is 10% of 150, and then we're just going to drag that down again. Now, you might not be registered for GST. In that case, you just wouldn't have anything here, or you would have zero. Or if you're in another country like the UK, you'd have like the VAT up here. It's the same sort of thing. In Australia, it's called GST. So we've got that centered. I might center this as well, just to try and make it, make it look a little, little bit nicer. Now down in the subtotal, we're gonna go here, we're gonna click on the auto sum button. And that's adding up everything in this column here. So 150 plus 80 is 230. The GST, I'm gonna do a sum, but I'm gonna pick up this column here. So I'm gonna go equals sum, open bracket, drag and hold and select all of this stuff. 
close bracket, enter, and 23. So that's picking up the sum of all this stuff, which is 10% of 230. And then for the total payable, I'm just going to go 230 plus 23 equals 253. I'm going to bold that. Check everything. That looks pretty good. So now I'm going to highlight or drag over and select our page outline. Then I'm going to go Control P or File Print. Print Selection. And then I'm going to go down to Scaling. And I'm going to go fit sheet on one page. Okay, so as you can see here, it sort of pushed it up to the top end of the page. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to reduce the size of some of these columns here. So I might even just take a couple out and we'll see how it looks. Now let's try that, see if that's any better after I took a couple of columns out. So we've still got print selection and fit sheet on one page and that's looking a bit better. But I might reduce it a little bit more still. So we're going to take another column out, compress it a little bit more. And we'll have a look at that. Okay, so that's looking a bit better. I might just push it out a little bit more, but what I'll do, I'll insert some columns here. I might just even drag this column out here to make it a bit longer. So I'll select the page again, and we'll go to print it. So we're still printing the selection and we're still fitting sheet onto one page and that's looking better. That's looking much better. So we're going to print that to PDF and see what it looks like. That's not too bad. Now, if you would like to get rid of this outside border here, we can do that. So what you do if you want to do it that way is, I'd go around the outside of the document, change the color to any color really, and then go back on the inside of the document, change that back to white, just so we can differentiate from where the document ends from where it begins, because we're going to get rid of this outline now. So I'm just going to select the lines that I want to get rid of and say no border. Same as down here, no border. Just going around the perimeter and getting rid of all the borders. Okay, so what I'll do now, I'll select it again, the white section. We'll go print. Printing selection, fit sheet onto one page, and that does look a bit cleaner. So we're going to print that to PDF. We're going to write over the one 
that we previously made. And then we're gonna go have a look at that. Okay, there it is, there's no border. And that looks, that looks okay. So what you could do as well, is you could reduce the size of these borders here. So there isn't such a wide border, so that would help do that. Um, also, in here, instead of terms, you could just say due date and type in the due date, which would be 14 days after the 13th in this case. And then down here, you might put in terms 14 days. But the beauty of Excel is that you can do whatever you want. It's just ultimate flexibility as long as you know how to use it. And something like this is relatively simple and straightforward to do. So that's pretty much it, guys. Now we can print our invoice. We can attach it to emails. You can even send it. Oh, you might not want to, but you could probably um, you know, send it straight from Excel here. But you're probably better off putting it into a PDF first. But anyway, thanks a lot, guys, for watching. If you have any tips you'd like to share down the bottom, please add. Um, that'll help out everyone who's looking to do this and maybe you've thought of better ways to do it than the way I did it. So let's just, why not share the knowledge? But anyway, thanks a lot for watching and catch you later.